Hey everybody. I um, wanted to post a quick recap um, of what we did in class yesterday in hopes that, you know, if you missed yesterday for whatever reason and you are able to come tomorrow, uh, maybe that'll help you, you know, figure out where, where, you, what, where you are and what we are doing. Uh, so yesterday we really rapidly covered some sections from the Quran and also from the Christian New Testament. Um, I pared down what we were doing from the New Testament to basically just the selection from the Sermon on the Mount that is in your Norton Anthology. Um, we kind of highlighted, because we were reading aloud, we highlighted the fact that um, depending on whether you were really used to reading or hearing the pieces from, I don't know why I'm shifting back and forth, like, <laughs> I'm rocking myself on the chair here. Um, the fidgeting is strong with this one. Um, anyway, depending on whether you were really familiar with the Sermon on the Mount from um, pre-existing religious contexts or not, you might read, like you might hear it in your head and read it aloud from the page as blessed are the so-and-so, um, or you might say blessed. Um, so one of the things that's kind of interesting to note as far as um, pieces of oral tradition that also have a written tradition accompanying them, like the, inter like the sort of interplay between written texts and oral texts and between reading silently and reading aloud. Um, we don't pronounce blessed, like we don't read that set of letters aloud with, a, with, like the, with the second syllable emphasized there anymore. But if you are used to the text from the King James Version, or if you've heard it a lot in religious contexts, or if you've been singing it in hymns, then automatically when you recognize, oh, this is the Sermon on the Mount, you hear in your head and you say aloud, blessed, instead of blessed. I do too, right? Like I'm familiar with the Sermon on the Mount from religious contexts, and very much for me when I read it on the page, I hear, blessed are the meek. Um, now, I think the... I think this translation says humble, but blessed are the whatever instead of blessed. Um, so that's kind of interesting to note and like one of the one of those traces that we do keep seeing um, in texts and the way that we use texts and like you can you can see the traces of previous textual encounters in the moment of reading there. So it's kind of interesting. Um, we did just a few selections from the Quran, and those are the ones that I posted in Canvas earlier this week for us to talk about uh, yesterday. We talked about, I think, all of them in class except the last one that ends at like 8.30 something. We didn't discuss that, so we pick up with that um, tomorrow. Having already discussed uh, the, the story of Zechariah's barren household and like, you, you know, his plea for God to grant him a son and the story of Joseph and Potiphar's wife that like goes on for pages. It's told a little, I mean, it's the same, it's recognizably the same story from Genesis, but it is told quite differently in terms of the detail and like the backstory and the, uh, pot, the way that um, the sort of political and social machination, machinations going on behind the scenes. Um, and we talked about some other passage with, with Zechariah's plea for a son and the gift of his son, John, uh, we talked about what it means to be a good kid, right? Like the way that a good kid is spelled out on the page was kind of interesting. Um, and so that kind of leaves us with the last passage that was assigned for us to talk about on Thursday. And the other thing we do on Thursday... <laughs> This may really discourage people from coming to class. I don't know. Um, on Thursday, I told you we are going, like, I'm going to give you your quick introduction to Beowulf, which is, um, I recite for you the first set of lines. It's called the Exordium. Um, it's a chance to give you um, an actual oral tradition experience. So I ask you to please not read Beowulf before coming to class. We will actually read uh, selections from Beowulf for next week and begin discussing them then. Um, but I really wanted, um, I wanted you to have at least one genuinely oral tradition kind of experience with some of these older texts. And Beowulf is one that I know well enough to like 
I'm not going to be a great performer, but I can actually recite it for you, right? Like it's, it's a thing that I can do, even if I would hope um, some ancient or some medieval uh, Anglo-Saxon bard might have done it better, right? Uh, so, you, so we do that uh, before we leave uh, tomorrow. Um, the other thing that I mentioned in class yesterday that you might want to have in mind, uh, you know, as you're preparing for tomorrow, is um, the sort of the power of this narrative about the invention of Christendom in the West and the Islamic world in the East, which on on the ground in lived practice it was never as simple as that but the narrative itself has power right like the way that we uh frame uh our retellings of any of the events that happened during that period the way that we shape like the concept of europe right like europe is kind of an an invention of the middle ages right like when we are reading the iliad the most of the action actually happens like over here in asia minor right it's not a european story by the time we get to um, Shakespeare, Europe is a thing now, right? So we are, like, as we read texts from the Middle Ages, we are reading the period in which the idea of Europe was invented. Um, and so that's kind of interesting and something that I want us to have in mind as we read and discuss this next set of texts. So hopefully that helps you to be kind of oriented for class tomorrow. If you have questions, I look forward to hearing them. I'll do my best to answer uh, before we get to class. If I'm unable to do that, I'll try and you know pull in uh, some of your curiosity in, into the lecture and discussion portion of tomorrow's class. Um, once again, as I've been saying all along, if you feel unwell for whatever reason, please don't come make us sick. <laughs> we don't. I, I'm not sure what is circulating, but something really is. Um, taking people out of uh, circulation or, you know, putting them out of commission for a while. It may not be COVID, but whatever it is, we don't want it. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm hoping that these videos and sort of recaps will give you um, the support you need to feel confident in taking time off if you need it. Um, otherwise, uh, we do enjoy having you in the classroom. And you, of course, um, discussion is always more interesting when everybody's able to participate. So um, look forward to seeing those of you who can come uh, tomorrow morning uh, to talk about um, these texts. So, uh, 